right here. So it's an O2 XR100R. Looks like it needs a tire, missing a bolt for the exhaust. Looks like it needs wheel bearings maybe. Shifter. Needs it to work. But for 400 bucks, what do you want, right? Put some grips on it, some new bars. Clutch cable isn't working. All right, I'm gonna switch it back to high pressure. Yeah, hold on, wait a minute. This thing's pissing all over me. Look. What, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I know, it was dripping on me when I was standing on the, on the truck. I just got it back home and I removed the air box and this is pretty common in our area, as you can see. It's obviously a nest that got built up inside there, so that's probably why it won't start. So I'm gonna clean out that nest and uh, we'll give it another go. Yeah, it's pretty bad, look at that. Pretty gnarly. It's a Honda though, it, it'll run. It's got a little bit of gas in it, but I'm sure the carburetor is right crapped up because this has been sitting for like three years, so. Yeah, we just pulled that out of it. A little stuffing. But... <laughs> We'll run her on starter fluid. There we go. So it runs. Yep. Speed. That's all we needed. I haven't checked the oil in it, so I don't want to go running it too much, but yeah. So we got a good project to start with. Sweet. All right, we've got the XR in the workshop. Now we just got to get it up on the lift. And this lift makes it pretty easy to work on bikes. I've taken my foot mounted pedal that normally comes with the lift and I mounted it to the side of the lift. And it just makes getting to everything so much easier. So I just plug on my line, then just go up like that. Then that releases it off the locks underneath. And then you just pull this right here and this just raises the safety latch. Let me bring you down and I'll show you. You see that orange little latch? That pulls that out of the way. And just lower it down. That easy. Obviously it goes down a lot slower when there's no weight on the table, so. All right, let's get this juleper up on there. That way we can assess everything that it needs. It's probably gonna need a lot. It's on the kickstand, we'll raise it up. That way I don't have to bend over. And raising it up is even simpler, you don't have to bend down. All you gotta do is just that. Up it goes. Then you just have to reach underneath and then pull down that bar. And then you can just set it to any of the heights that you want along the way. There, now it's sitting on the stops and we don't have to worry about it, you know, something going wrong with it. Front tires all dry, rot and cracked. Then just as an added precaution, I like to put a strap on the bike, anything that I have up on the lift. That way I don't have to worry about it flipping over because if you guys watch my KTM rebuild series, you will know that I dropped that bike off the lift. So that's never enjoyable. Live and learn, I guess. So the wheel bearings are shot in the back, you can see. So obviously we're gonna order wheel bearings and seals those are like 10 bucks i just was looking online check this out guys now that i have the rear suspension held up so you can see the rear tire spins watch watch right here this link that's pretty clapped out front brake um, felt like it was sticking inside i think that that's the cable so i'll probably just order a front brake cable and as you saw earlier 
the clutch cable uh, that's all locked up so I'll order a new clutch cable there's another 10 bucks pegs are bent shifted linkage is bent we'll straighten all that out I'll just hammer it back in place the rear sprocket actually doesn't look that bad surprisingly so that's probably okay front sprocket doesn't look that bad needs tires in the front is I don't know what dry cracked like crazy though <laughs> look at that that's pretty bad so yeah spike's got some time on it but I'm not too uh too worried about it yeah guys I really like going through bikes it's kind of a fun thing to do as far as I'm concerned I don't know if the rear brake works or not on it we'll, while we have it apart I'll take a look at that and uh we may end up having to order brake pads don't know probably put a new spark plug in it and clean the carb I know that needs to be done let's see if it's got any oil in it hmm yeah the oil got oil in it doesn't smell bad actually <laughs> it is dirty she's black all right guys I think the next thing we're going to start doing is I've just finished ordering a bunch of parts we'll go over that here in a little bit but I'm going to start getting things stripped down getting things uh cleaned up as we go I snapped off one of the studs on the seat bracket which I got to get a new seat cover anyway so what we'll probably end up doing is I'll just uh, sink a new bolt down through there probably through both of them but yeah seat covers ripped so the plan for this bike guys and just the direction that I'm going to go with this and what I've decided is I'm not going to make this bike perfect like I did the uh, Honda quad build that we did or the um or my KTM build what I want to do is I want to get this bike looking good and get everything that's wrong with it fixed so like you know the clutch cable needed a new one I ordered a brake cable while I was at it it needs um, hand grips so I ordered those so basically to get the bike back to reliable normal functioning uh, whatnot pretty much if it needed it I just went and got it guys that's pretty much what I did if it didn't need it I didn't so like the front wheel bearings uh, I didn't order new wheel bearings because they weren't bad so uh, and then we're just going to go through and I will probably powder coat some of the things to get them to look really good because this is like a high wear item that rubs against your leg um, and I'll take the pipe off and we'll sandblast that we'll clean it up but I'm not going to go too crazy on cost because you know it's Honda it's bulletproof so I just want to get it back to normal running reliable condition but one of the things I got to start off with doing first is I've got to get this carburetor off because uh, it's dirty so let's get that taken off so I'll I'll pull off the plastics on the back we can get that off there I'll get off this rear fender because that's all busted off um, so I'll have to order one of those maybe I'll get a plastics kit I don't know and a lot of the stuff's gonna be probably pretty dirty underneath all this plastic because I wasn't able to get all this stuff clean try not to wreck the plastic ah, there we go uh, what do we got a crack subframe looks like it that's okay though I know a guy that can do some welding so let's see yeah a little crack here right in the back you see that right there not a big deal subframe looks straight and square to the bike so I'm not concerned about it missing a bolt there minor what do you want for a bike that's 20 something years old right already cleaned this one yesterday oh I ordered a new chain slider you see how that's all jacked up there so I got a new one of those coming probably should order a chain I don't know we'll see sprockets don't look bad though I'm sure these are all gonna be rusted right in there just like everything else on this thing all right give those a second to sit and let's see I'll shock it with a hammer a little bit sometimes if you take a bolt like that and you hit it that's why an impact will sometimes get out a uh, a bolt that's lodged in just because of the uh, the percussion of it shakes it loose you know fingers crossed let's see if we can get this one uh, yeah here we go 
is that one. This bike, uh, obviously it's set outside for a period of time and that is pretty hard on, on bikes. Another one here, hopefully this one. Yep, came right out. For fasteners guys, I, uh, I usually deal with a company called Bell Metric and I'll put a link down in the description to their website, but they are awesome when it comes to uh, like sourcing out these metric fasteners. And, and what I usually do is I usually buy them in stainless steel because you can get them way cheaper than you'd buy uh, new fasteners at a hardware store. And they're way cheaper than buying them through the factory. Like you can get a whole bag of, um, you know, they'd have these screws, no problem. And, you, and I could get them in stainless steel. So they just look good. Uh, it just looks really nice when you replace hardware with, with new stuff, you know goes back together so much better too. All right. Get out of there. All right, let's see how the uh, subframe looks. Yeah, that's dead. Uh, <laughs> looks like it's tweaked to the left, maybe? Can't tell. Yeah, she looks like she's tweaked. I'm not worried about it. And like I do for all my projects, guys, I have these little small baggies and I save them from parts that come in and stuff like that. Um, I take these little small baggies and I don't write on the baggie. I used to years ago, but I stopped doing that because then you can't reuse the baggie. So I just took out these four bolts and those are for the rear fender. Then I put that there's four of them in parentheses so I know that I'm not missing any. There's supposed to be four. There should be four in the bag. And then I just tuck it in to this. And that's probably a scam caller, like usual. It is. Hello, good day. Am I speaking with Sharon? No. I just need to confirm a few quick details. Are you still located in the state of Maine? Yes. Do you have an existing life insurance policy at this time? No. Are you looking for a guaranteed whole life policy where the price stays the same and never expires? No. What type of policy are you looking for? I wasn't. Well, we would love the opportunity of helping you save some money when it comes to life insurance. Yeah, no, I'm all set. I'm good, assholes. And then I just take this now, so now it's all together with what's in it, and then I just file that away in a box. And then I'm nice and organized when it comes time to do reassembly. There's a little bit of gas in the gas tank, so I gotta try to turn off this fuel petcock, and it doesn't really wanna move, and I'm guessing it's probably uh, not gonna work correctly. So I've ordered a new one. And then it comes with a new filter and all that stuff. So Another handy tool to have, guys, is a JIS screwdriver. These are made for uh, these, like, which look to be like a Phillips head screw, but they're not. They're, they're called, I think it's JIS, is Japanese Industrial Standard. And they just fit good and they don't strip out. <sighs> Unhook the slide. Loosen the tank up a little bit. Oh yeah, it smells just like varnish. This thing's been sitting for a long time. Yeah, we're gonna flush that tank out, it's bad. And the uh, fuel petcock that I got also came with all new uh, lines too, new fuel lines, so. And I'm sure these are all garbage, so. Yeah, it's got all kinds of crap in it. Yeah, I'm glad I got a new a new one. I think everything's out. Carburetor looks like it's ready to come off now. There we go. Yeah, there it is. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do, I've got just got some degreaser guys, and the next thing you wanna do is go into your, um, you know, go to the wi your wife's kitchen and grab one of her um, cookie trays. These work super good to uh, to clean parts on. As you can see, I've used some like red coat with it and I clean parts with it and clean chains, but whatever you do, don't tell her that you've taken this part because she's not gonna allow you to have this uh, tray if you ask for it. So you're gonna have to sneak it out of there. And if you get caught, don't tell her that I told you. You're on your own. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this cookie sheet because like I said it works good for uh, cleaning carburetors and cleaning parts especially parts that 
that are dirty and that you may want to use like some uh, carb cleaner on and stuff and grab one of these sheets and clean it up dry it off and then tear down your carburetors on it because it works awesome and cleaning carburetors really isn't that difficult guys it's actually uh fairly straightforward and you're gonna see me do it right now i don't know if i have to order parts or not but we'll find out gas definitely smells like varnish so it's probably pretty bad gas You can get rebuild kits uh, for these carburetors. I actually, when I did my Honda Quad, that that's uh, 34 years old. It's a TRX 70, and I think I might have some videos on this channel of it. If not, I will uh, post a link to my other channel where where they might be. But uh, yeah, and I got the rebuild kit from a company called I think K and L or something like that, and really nice rebuild kit. Their rebuild kits are made in Japan. Oh yeah, if you guys could smell this, it literally smells just like turpentine. Yeah, I think it's loosening. Hopefully I don't ruin the gasket. Oh, it stinks. I have a feeling this gasket's gonna be ruined. Oh, 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 oh my god guys this is the worst carburetor i've ever seen i don't know if we're going to be able to save this wow that's wicked bad you know guys what does this though ethanol fuel ethanol gas it's wicked wicked bad for your carburetors Look at it. Unreal. I probably won't even mess around with this one, guys. I probably will literally just go and buy a rebuild kit. Because the jets in these are so tiny. In the pilot jets, they're just so small that um, they just clog up super easy. So it's a lot easier to just go out and buy a jet kit. And that's what I had to do in the carburetor in my... My 34-year-old Honda Quad, it wasn't even nearly remotely this bad. Yeah, we're going to have to do some serious work on that tank. So that just reinforces I'm glad that I... Uh... Oh, wow, that's bad. Let's go clean it out with some degreaser. Now, we're going to need some tools to get this clean, guys. And one of the things I find that works best is go grab your wife's toothbrush and you can get right in there. This is going to have to take some serious scrubbing and soaking. And I don't have an ultrasonic parts cleaner. Maybe I will after this. Well, that would be why I wouldn't start, guys, for him. We'll see if we can get through it with some of this. This is an acid-based wheel cleaner for aluminum. It's pretty aggressive. Well, that helped. Yeah, we'll just have to keep at it. This will uh, make this carburetor shine like a brand new one. Look how it's turning it. Yeah, make sure you wear gloves when you do this stuff too, guys, because it's an acid. It's bad for your fingers and the hands. It's a very rewarding feeling when you take something like this. Look how good that cleaned up, guys. That casting on the outside looks brand new. Don't leave this stuff sitting very long if you buy this uh, cleaner. Uh, if you leave it sitting too long, it'll cause all kinds of problems. And don't get it on your paint either. They make two of them. They make this one, which is acid base. I think I get this, I believe, at O'Reilly's. And uh, this one is like real soft. This one won't. This one won't damage your uh, aluminum. But like, watch this one right here. When you spray it on, it actually like foams up, and it like turns it gray. See, look at that. It's almost like putting peroxide on a wound. You know what I mean? It like foams all up. So you, you want to make sure you're wearing gloves with this. You want to have on uh, some, a pair of safety glasses, which I do right now, uh, just because you don't want to get that stuff in your eyes. And, and you want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area because it has got a pretty nasty smell to it. But we'll hit this one more time inside. Yeah, look, see it's starting to cut through that stuff now. And uh, hopefully we can eat through all that crud that's down in there and get this carburetor nice and clean again. That's a good first uh, first go around right now. I can get in there with like some dental picks and 
uh, some cleaning brushes and stuff like that and really detail this thing up inside. You want this really clean, you know. If you take apart a carburetor and you only take apart a few of the pieces and you don't take it apart all of it, it's going to you're going to have the same problem again. I can promise you guys. I have tried going the route of um, cleaning the carburetor partially, meaning like you don't take the jets out, you just do a little bit, especially with a carburetor this dirty, it's only going to come back and bite you. So just do it right. Do it now and do it once uh, because it's who wants to take it apart after you've already done it again? So, yeah, this is good now. For now, this will be a good first coat there. Wow, that's bad. All right, so we'll let this dry and we'll uh, hose out the other one. Hopefully I can save this carburetor. She's pretty bad. I've never, uh, this is the worst one I've ever seen, honestly. I'm sure there's been many worse ones out there, but this is the worst I've ever dealt with. And this is why I don't run ethanol fuel in any of my stuff, guys, because it's brutal. It's horrible on them. If I can get that float out of there. Hopefully I can get the jets out of there. These ears will break off real easy too, if you're not careful. Oh, this carburetor doesn't take some work, guys. This is the main jet. I came out. Yeah, this thing's bad. Now, you want to get your best screwdriver whenever you're working with uh, jets because all it takes is one little slip and then you're not going to get it out. There's that one. And this one, I think, is the, I don't know, let's see if it goes in. Okay, so quarter, half, quarter, one, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. Look at the fuel line, guys. Look at the inlet. Completely plugged up. Now, this is a punch that I actually, just a little cheap punch that I ground down and tapered it to push out these pins. But they only go one way and these little ears break off extremely easy, so. Hopefully I don't end up doing that, but it's possible. And I got extremely lucky, guys. <clears throat> so if you're doing one of these carburetors, it pushes out. You see how there's two bosses here? There's a tall boss and a, th and a short boss in height. That one is up here. This one's down here. Push it out from the short side to the long side. So it's coming out the long end. Then underneath this, there'll be a needle that we got to pull out. This is called the float here, the black thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, even the needle is uh, worn. Probably can't see it, but. There's a step in the needle. Uh, maybe not. Looks like there might be a little step in it right here. And that's not good. You don't want that. That's how you tear down a carburetor, guys. That's, you could take this off, too. All this works is just this mechanism right here. There's no, no other function so it's not really necessary to I don't generally pull this out this is just the butterfly for the choke um, you could I suppose if you wanted to but I don't know as if there's any benefit to doing it so okay there it is
Now I just got to figure out how to get this thing cleaned. Probably have to buy an ultrasonic cleaner and soak it. I'm giving this a go. The issue is, is that I can put compressed air through this. I can't through this one. And I've sprayed some carb cleaner and some other stuff through it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually, I've never, I've never heard of anyone doing this, but I'm going to try setting it on the stove and I'm going to boil it and see if I can boil whatever crud was in there. See if I can boil it out. We'll give it a go and see what happens. Oh, and this foam is just because I washed my hands with some Dawn dish detergent and uh, just kind of like let it run into the pan. So there's a little bit of Dawn dish detergent in there. So we'll give it a try and see what happens. All right, guys, I cannot believe it, but yeah, we did it. We got it opened up. So I, let me just explain to you in detail everything um, that I ended up having to go through. There's a lot that you didn't see. So now this passage, just for anyone who's wondering with this style carb, this passage right here, this one right there, that one, travels down through this passageway and comes right out through here through the pilot jet inside you can see the little channel way that there's actually a hole that goes in there well this one i wasn't able to get any air through at all using compressed air so that one goes straight through here into this main jet area well no matter what I did, I could not get it open. I used parts cleaner, I used brake cleaner, I used carb cleaner, I used chem dip, uh, which is right here. And a buddy of mine let me borrow that. I soaked this carburetor in that for an hour and that didn't change anything. So what I ended up doing is I ended up using like dental picks going down through here and trying to like really target this area right here by scraping it with like dental picks just kind of going round and round and round and then putting more air to it. Well, eventually it did come out and I was able to get air to blow through. Whether or not, um, whether or not the hole is opened up enough because this carburetor is kind of like rotted inside. Whether or not the air passageway is enough for it to run, I don't know. But I've cleaned it all up. You can see how I've taken the needle seat. I took a little bit of uh, polishing compound on the end of a q-tip and I just polished the inside surfaces by like doing that and then I just took some real fine brushes and cleaned inside all the passageways I'll show you what those look like just some cheap brushes that I picked up at Harbor Freight they're uh, nylon bristle brushes and then I just pushed them down through all the passageways and just did my best to clean up everywhere so whether or not it was enough to make it run i don't know but fingers crossed and i'm hoping and i also boiled the carburetor after i got that opened up for an hour on the stove at a raging boil i took all this plastic stuff off and uh boiled it for an hour and all these little marks right here that you see i was actually like tapping on it with like a punch to try to vibrate any of that fragmented aluminum inside, trying to get that to free up. And in the interim, I've also bought a um, ultrasonic cleaner, but it's not in yet, so. But yeah, it's freed up now, so air needs to flow through both of these. Whether it's flowing through enough to, to make it right, I don't know, but we'll find out. And that's all there is to it, guys. This episode is getting really long, so tune in next week. We'll get this carburetor back together, and we'll see if this thing will get running or not. I'm, fingers crossed, I'm hoping, because I really don't want to have to go buy another carburetor. And if you guys want to find out how I straightened this subframe, you're going to have to go to my other channel to check that out. That's my welding and fabrication channel. While you're over there, like and subscribe if you want. But we're going to be fixing the frame on that channel because it's going to require metal fabrication and some welding. So until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. Like, comment, subscribe. And we'll be doing more on this rebuild coming up next week. See ya.